Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The cast potic is examined and finished to a rubber wheel finish. Then it is tried on the model to verify its fit. It should snap into place and it should be held in its proper position with the lugs. The occlusion is checked to see if the occlusion is correct. Flux is placed on the soldering lug area. It's very important to do this at this particular time because it is impossible to get flux in this solder joint area later on when the bridge is invested. This is once more tried on the model and the occlusal relations are checked. Durally then is painted on the occlusal surfaces of the potic and the bicuspid and molar casting. This Durale soldering splint will hold these three components together while the bridge is being invested. This Durale is confined to the occlusal portion of the crowns and potic and can lap over on the periphery slightly, staying away from the margins. Once sufficient Durale has been placed on the occlusal, then a paper clip is placed to give added stability to the Durale soldering splint. An old discarded burr can also be used for this procedure. Durale is used to tack this paper clip down securely. The Durley has hardened and then the bridge is removed carefully and the soldering splint is examined on the under portion and if we're happy with this then the bridge is tried back on the model to verify its accuracy and fit. It should not rock and the margin should be sealed. Wax is placed on the under portion of the solder joint area. Blue inlay wax or soft green wax can be used for this procedure. It's important to block out this area with wax to allow room for the solder. This will prevent the investment from closing this area. Once this has been completed on the bicuspid in the molar, then an antiflux of rouge and chloroform is placed on the cervical margins adjacent to the solder joint area. A very thin strip of this antiflux is painted on the margin and the internal aspect. You can see us painting a slight margin of antiflux on the internal portion of the bicuspid here. And the internal portion of the molar you note that this is just a fine line. Excess is not needed. A heavier mix of soldering and investment is mixed. If this mix is too thin, it will not support the bridge. The investment is vibrated into the molar crown and bicuspid three-quarter crown. And then a high mound of investment is placed on a tile or glass slab. You'll note if the investment is thick, it will support the bridge. This is formed into a high mound. And then the bridge is carefully placed so that at least one half of the occlusal portion is exposed and the buckle portion of the three-quarter crown is buried. We can rough form the embrasure area at this time. The trimmed investment can be viewed here. You'll note the V areas around the area where we're going to solder and the Duralay that needs to be burned off at this particular time. 
This is inverted over a Bunsen flame, and when the Duralay bubbles, then it is peeled off. It's important not to rush this procedure. Now you'll note that it's starting to bubble. And when it blisters and bubbles and almost catches on fire, then we start to peel the Duralay off. First remove the paper clip and then start to peel the Duralay. If it is a little stiff, as it is here, we reheat and try again. And you may have to do this two or three times until the Duralay does come off and leave the occlusal surface exposed. The occlusal area now is antiflux with chloroform and rouge. A strip of antiflux is painted on the occlusal surface in the triangular fossa area about a millimeter and a half away from the solder joint. This need not be a wide area and you'll note the distance between the solder joint area and the anaflux. This will keep the solder from flowing into the occlusal anatomy. You'll note the position of the four strips of anaflux. The invested bridge then is placed in a room temperature oven and heated to between 11 and 1200 degrees. The purpose of this is to heat it slowly so that the investment will expand evenly. When the bridge reaches 1200 degrees, it is taken out of the oven and placed on a ring stand with a Bunsen burner burning beneath it. This will maintain the temperature that we had in the oven. Small amounts of flux then are placed in the solder joint area. This flux is placed within the lines of antiflux that we have placed previously. A small chip of solder then is placed in this area to act as an index. And when this flows, this indicates that the proper temperature has been reached. A brush flame then is used to continue the heating of the investment. Even heating is very important and this brush flame will heat the components of the crown more evenly. When the crowns start to glow, then we can use a finer flame and direct it directly at the solder joint area. You'll note that the crowns are starting to glow to a cherry red. We'll then observe the small chips and use a finer flame that has less noise. And you'll note that the little chip now is starting to flow. At this point then, it is an indication that we should place our soldering strip in this joint area. And the solder should flow as you see here. Continue heating. And when we're satisfied with the shape of that joint, we'll go on to the molar area and heat this. And the chip flows, as you see here. Then we will come in from the buckle, add a small amount of solder, and add a small amount from the lingual just to finish that in. Heat it just a little bit. And if we're happy with that, and then we'll allow it to cool. The investment is cleaned away and the bridge is pickled. You'll note the shape of the solder joint from the undersurface. It has flowed clearly underneath the soldering lug. It has not flowed onto the adjacent crowns or potic excessively. You'll note 
the flow of solder on the occlusal surface confined within the antiflux areas. Now this is tried on the model. The margins are checked, the area under the ponic, the contact, and it should fit without wobbling or wiggling. At this point then, the bridge should be tried on the patient model in this laboratory exercise. Because if it does not fit the patient, then new soldering relations need to be taken and this corrected at this particular time. If this is correct, then we will continue finishing the bridge on the model. An automatic chuck will be used to finish this bridge. We grasp the brass collar and this releases the clutch to allow us to place the burr in and out. We suggest that you practice with a rubber wheel first. When you know how to operate it, then place in a separating disc. The separating disc is used to shape and form the solder joint area. It should be in a triangular shape and the excess solder should be removed with this disc. This also can be used to form the occlusal surface, the marginal ridge area, where there is excess solder. Sand disc is placed in the mandrel and the Roughnesses that were formed by the separating disc are now polished. This is a medium sand disc, and you'll note that we have softened this beforehand so that it conforms to the surface of the ponic. This will then remove the scratches so that we are ready to use a rubber wheel. The sand disc also can be very carefully teased down to the margin taking care not to touch the die or overfinish this marginal area. This is then removed and the rubber wheel, a Kratex wheel, can be placed in the automatic chuck and further roughnesses can be removed. Care must be taken not to overpolish the contact area. The undersurface of the ponic and all other areas then are polished at this time. The bridge is tried back on the model and the occlusion is checked with articulating paper and shim stock. If the bridge is going to be high, it usually is in the solder joint area where there is excessive solder. This can be adjusted using a small green stone and we're leaving this area and rechecking again with shim stock. A small finishing burr can be used also to retrace the occlusal anatomy and refine the grooves. Care must be taken not to touch the centric stops, but all other areas can be finished on the occlusal surface with finishing burrs, giving some detail and shine to these non-functional areas. The bridge then can be further polished on the occlusal surface with a wire bristle brush. Care must be taken only to use a soft wire bristle brush. This will burnish the gold and not remove the centric stops. This will get a, give us a high shine in this occlusal area and finish the recesses in the occlusal surface. The bridge is again tried on the model, the margins verified and checked, and if we're happy with this portion, then a Robinson bristle brush is used to polish with BBC. You'll note here we're protecting the margin with our thumbnail. This bristle brush with BBC will polish this undersurface of the solder joint. You'll note how nicely it fits into this area. It's important to refurbish the brush with BBC frequently. This can also be used to polish the axial surfaces. Then a rag wheel with BBC is used to polish the 
axial surfaces, staying away from the occlusal because we do not want to reduce the centric stops. The margins can be protected with the thumbnail or a fingernail when polishing the undersurface of the ponic. It's important to remove all the scratches from this area. This will inhibit the formation of plaque. Actual surfaces are also polished in this manner. Care must be taken not to overpolish the contact. Rouge then is used again with the bristle brush to give the undersurface a high luster. A chamois wheel then is used to polish the undersurface, again protecting the margins with the fingers. And polishing the actual surfaces. This will eliminate all the scratches. This has been cleaned and scrubbed. You'll note the ponic conforms to the shape of the ridge. Margins are checked. It has a high polish. Our buckle surfaces all line up. And the buckle cusps are harmonious as you look down from the mesial. The occlusal surfaces are polished at this time. We have still maintained our centric stops on the occlusal surface and on the buckle cusps. The axial surfaces are highly polished and there are no scratches evident on any of these undersurfaces. The solder joint has been polished to a high luster and the undersurface of the ponic has a high luster. All the scratches have been eliminated. The occlusal surface has been sandblasted. This aids in marking the occlusion and also reduces the reflection of gold when the patient opens her mouth. You'll note that the actual surfaces still have a high polish. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.